Hi and welcome back to your processing series. Now you may notice a couple of things that have changed in this video. For one, the audio quality has changed because I've changed the microphone, but I'm pretty happy with the audio quality in this microphone, so hopefully you are as well. Uh, if it is too low, then please do let me know in the comments below. Um, I've got a reasonably powerful sound system, so I can hear it quite well, um, but if you cannot, then it would be brilliant if you could let me know. And the other obvious thing that's changed is the processing client itself. Now, back in the last video, when I say back in the last video, because that was four months ago, we were using processing 2.2, uh, and now the processing team skipped processing 2.3 onwards and jumped straight to processing 3.0, and 3.0 is is a very new uh, new processing. Uh, that, that's pretty much what it is. Um, it has a few new features which include autocomplete. So now when we type, for example, ball dot, uh, we get a list of variables and methods that are contained in the ball. And, and that is pretty great. Um, and also it contains other things like faster rendering and support for live errors and things like that that you can, you've just seen there appear uh, on real time. So all these things are really quite great and, and they've included that in the new processing 3.0 but nothing that we've covered so far has changed so we can just keep doing what we're doing. Uh, take into account, however, that if you're watching this video in the future, which undoubtedly you will be because you're not watching it right now, you may be using a different processing version and things may have changed. So just remember, keep that in mind um, that if you write exactly the same as is in the video and it does not work, first make sure that you have indeed written exactly the same as is in the video. And if it still does not work, that processing may have changed slightly and therefore you may have to go and read the reference um, documentation to check what has changed. But it should not change too much, so hopefully we will be okay in that regard. Okay, so the purpose of this video was to simplify and clean up the code a wee bit, so we would make it uh, a bit more readable and a bit cleaner. The first thing that I realize when I'm reading this code is that we have some code here which does a display move and then checks for collisions against the walls and then changes the speed based on those collisions. And then we've got the exact same code again, but for ball two. So we've got two balls and both of them have a, essentially the same code twice. So this is obviously a case of duplicated code and this is something we want to avoid in our code. So we are going to avoid that by simplifying all of this and putting it all inside the ball class. Another option would be to put these methods below under the draw method, and that would also be a valid option if you do not want to put them inside the ball class. Um, however, you'll find that that will quite quickly clutter your main application, so I would definitely recommend putting them in the ball class. Because after all, ball collisions with the walls and changing direction is all related to the ball, so it should be contained inside the class for the ball. So. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create a method inside the ball class that will check for whether the ball is colliding with the walls or not. So I'm going to start with a method called is colliding with vertical walls. And the vertical walls are the ones on the sides because they are vertical. Horizontal walls will be the ones top and bottom. So in order to check whether we are colliding with vertical walls, we simply have to get the x position of the ball and check whether we are colliding or not. So I'm going to copy this code and then paste it here and then re-indent that properly. So if the ball's x position plus the radius is greater than the width, this, mean that this means that we've hit the right. And if the ball's x minus the, the radius is less than zero, it means we have hit the left. So remember that we are now not dealing with a ball, we're rather dealing with the ball that this method is being called on. So we no longer need a reference to ball here because the get x method refers to the ball that we are using right now. And similarly here and here and here and here. But, this method checks if we are colliding with the vertical walls. 
it does not say anywhere in the name of the method that it is going to change the speed of the ball when it does collide. So therefore we cannot have this line here simply because this line does something that is not immediately obvious with the method name. So we have two options, either change the method name to say check collisions with vertical walls, that could be an option, or another option is to not have this line here. So I'm going to go with keeping the name and instead saying if we are colliding with either the left or the right wall, return true. If we are not, return false. Another error line disappears because processing realizes this is valid now. So basically, if the x position plus the radius is greater than the width, we return true, say yes, we are colliding. Or if the x position minus the radius is less than zero, we also return true and say yes, we are colliding. If neither of those are true, we return false because we are not colliding with either the right or the left wall. And then we can copy this and paste it and see is colliding with side walls and simply change this for the y and this for the height. Now this is an example where we have duplicate code here and here but is there a way that we can remove the duplication? And the answer is yes, of course. Um, we've got the only difference between these two methods is get x and get y and width and height. So we could pass these as parameters to the method and then remove the duplication that way. But then the name of the method would have to change as well, obviously. If we are checking for y and height, it would no longer be vertical walls, it would be side walls, or indeed uh, horizontal walls. So this is a, a bit of a compromise between naming your methods well and in easy to understand ways and um, removing duplication. So in this case, the duplication is small enough that I'm going to decide to keep the duplication and keep the more expressive names. Um, but that is always a compromise that you have to make. So now we can check whether we are colliding with the walls or not. And the next thing to do is I'm going to copy this and here public void check collisions with walls. And this method is indeed going to change the speed of the ball. So if is colliding with vertical walls, um, these are on the side, so horizontal, in fact. If we're colliding with the horizontal walls, we will change the dy speed. And if we are colliding with the vertical walls, then we'll change the dx speed, the speed in the x-axis. And now this is slightly prettier and slightly easier to read as well. We can very quickly know. We don't even really need to read that because we know if we're colliding with the horizontal walls, well obviously we're going to change uh, the y speed. And if we're colliding with the vertical walls, we're obviously going to change the x speed. So this kind of becomes obvious after you read the method name there. So this is why good method naming is important. And now we've got essentially this. So what we can do is ball is colliding, sorry, uh, check collisions with walls. We can do that. And ball to check collisions with walls. We can also do that. And now we've got this code here which is also duplicated, but in a lot less measure. The last thing I would like to do is to join these two methods together into one method. So I'm going to cut that code and come here and say public void update and paste that in and say move check collisions with walls. And what this will do is it'll update the current ball. It'll first move it and then it will check the collisions with the walls. 
so now instead of ball.move and then ball.check collisions, we can just say ball.update. And similarly for this one. And now this is substantially shorter and cleaner and easier to read than it was before. And indeed, if we come down to this update method definition, we can see update just moves the ball and then checks the collisions. And then the check collision simply changes the speed. So we can easily read this um, very quickly. One last change I'm going to make in this video, which I appreciate is already getting quite long, is I'm going to reorder these methods. I'm going to have the most important method at the top and lesser important methods uh, at the bottom. So I'm going to cut this method and I'm going to put it here at the top. And notice how this update method uses the move method first. So the move method is going to come first below and then it uses the check collisions with walls. So I'm going to cut this and put it below the move. And then I'm going to get these two methods and put them below that. So I'll cut those and put them here. OK. And then the display method gets used after that. And then the remainder of the methods, uh, as you know, the getters and the setters. So this is how I would clean up this code. And now you can see that it is a lot easier to read and a lot easier to understand what is going on. Although you will have to go into the update method to understand what the update is and, and, uh, and how the ball gets updated, you can do that very easily and you can understand how that works. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. And if it didn't, of course, go ahead and, and ask a, a question in the comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to answer as fast as possible. Um, and in the next videos, we're going to be covering a, bit, a few more features that we can implement into this program. So I will see you in the next one.